here to talk about the new series of uh, Ripper Street. Um, I'll start with you. Um, what's it like returning in, in, in the series? Uh, it's returning has been it's just been great. I mean, it's it's a loving environment. It's a great show. And we're just really happy that it's back. Surprisingly. <laughs> I mean, did you anticipate that longevity for it when you started it? No, no, not at all. I didn't think, I mean, I didn't know what I'd gotten into when I'd first signed on. It was, uh, I kind of thought it would be like a, not that it's a bad show, but kind of like a Victoria, a Victorian, like Xena warrior princess, because <laughs> I just, I mean, I'd auditioned for it in Dublin and I was sort of at a low point in my career, so I figured, ah, hell, they gave this job to me, it can't be very good. Um, <laughs> no, it's true. And then I showed up, and it, it's uh, it, and it was. Um, it took me a long time to realize the uh, just the ca the caliber of, of the whole thing. It was the first read through when I first realized that I was in hot water with some very very uh, talented people. And so, no, I had no conception that we would be here four years later. Mm -hmm. uh, and Matthew joining the cast. Um, can you tell us a bit about your character? Um, okay, uh, well, I'm Sam Drummond, new desk sergeant at Lehman Street, at the new Nick, and uh, he's kind of this new um, generation, I guess, of, of police officer who is starting to embrace uh, modern technology and trying to incorporate that into catching criminals, basically. Um, and uh, that all sounds well and good, and he sounds like he knows exactly what he's doing, but actually... He's still very, very green, um, and he looks very much up to, you know, these three guys, um, Matthew, Jerome, and Adam, um, f for guidance because actually Whitechapel is is a little bit darker and a little bit more intense than anyone can really imagine when they first go there. Um, but no, it's fun. It's been really, it's been really, really cool um, joining a cast like this. Uh, is something that you always dream of being an actor, to get jump into a Victorian period world um, with all the uniforms and the, and the hairstyles and the mustaches that go with that. Uh, it's great. It's like being a real actor, you know. It looks fantastic on screen. Um, how do they go about recreating the the Victorian era? Because I mean, it looks impeccable t from my eye. Well, I, I mean, it, it's no it's definitely no mystery. They just they got the best people and and allowed them to do their work I mean brilliant production design brilliant costume design uh, brilliant writing I mean that's really it you know what I mean I, I don't have a better answer yeah. than that mm -hmm. and in terms of the characters do you have to get in a very different mindset to play a character from that era or is that in the script in terms of the language and uh, for me that's in the script uh, because I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't deign to know what someone like that would have been and luckily it's not up to me to invent it because Richard mm. has done the research and has written the written the dialogue so from from my money it's just you y you show up and you 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 try to play it for all it's worth you, you know yeah I, I, you know the, the 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 themes that Richard uh touches on in this show are are universal and timeless really as we, we see in this first episode which he focuses heavily on uh on empire and imperialism and immigration and, and Islam and all this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, these, these are issues uh, and themes that are still very much alive today. Um, and so I don't think people's, you know, emotions and, and opinions and things are that, that much detached from from now. Um, you know, there's a few little tweaks and things, but as Adam says, you know, Richard's taking care of all that skillfully in the, in the dialogue. And, and uh, it, it's, it's a nice job because you open a script and it's all there on the page, which uh, isn't common often. Um, so it's uh, it's handy for that. Have you, have you learned anything surprising from that era, from doing the uh, show yourselves? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I learned a lot just by, by from reading the script. I think the thing that most struck me when I first took on the job was just how harsh, how harsh life was back then. Um, I I mean it was I wrote I, I wrote this book. I read this book. <laughs> I wrote this book. Uh Jack London did this interesting book. Um I think it was called People of the Abyss where he as an American decided to go undercover in Whitechapel. This was 1910. Um and the stories that that he would report from the conditions and 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 just life there 
Ripper is sometimes uh, criticized for being a bit violent and harsh, but but actually we we kind of we don't underplay it. You can't quite do it justice. I mean, because it was I mean it was it was unbelievable. This cab driver, uh, I took. He's like, you look from oh Ripper Street. He's, he's he's like, I was like, yeah, it takes place Victorian Whitechapel. He's like, God, those were hard times. I'm like, yeah, they were. You know, we try to do it justice, and he, and he gave me an education. He was like, well, you couldn't possibly. Yeah. Because he, he told me, I'm about to waffle on. No, man, go for it. Uh, he told me about this guy, Bernardo, Dr. Bernardo, who now runs a, a big charity. And he mm -hmm. was a doctor, I believe, from Ireland, who was going to go to China to help starving children there. And on the way to China, he, this, is a, this is around the same time that this place takes place, he stopped before his main journey in to London. And he never went to China because the conditions there were... Wow. With third world, you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I learned. Is is uh, I wouldn't want to live then. <laughs> uh, one of the really strong aspects of the show is, um, and, and I think it makes it quite different from a number of other shows, is the the arcs that you get running throughout the series and even over multiple series. So I was wondering how your character progresses in this series and what we can expect from from your character, Matthew. Uh, okay. Cheers. Um, well, I mean, I don't know how much there is we can actually say. There's a lot of sort of twists and turns that uh, that happen throughout this series, and we, you know really keen not to, to give any of those away. Um, I guess um, what's nice for my character is that Reed uh, obviously comes back to join the Nick and um, he is a, a bit of a hero a, around Whitechapel. I think pretty much anyone who works in the police service in London is aware of Reed and his exploits. Um, and so to, to, to work and learn around the great Edmund Reed is a is a big boon for, for Drummond. But then also, we have some nice um, scenes together with yeah, Simarilk, uh, where, where uh, Drummond actually learns about, about Jackson's history. And that's absolutely um, inspiring. And, and I think he's just trying to become a better copper and trying to, to bring in as much as possible um, whilst having his eyes open to the horrors of, of Whitechapel. And there might be a wee little love interest thrown in there as well. And for yourself, the the character progression in this one. Uh, I th I think Jackson. You know, I I think he. Uh, he's he's. I think he's someone who seemingly doesn't really change. Um, and I guess philosophically, you could say who really does. Um, I, his 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 progression is 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 purely circumstantial. He's um. He's a man who's tried in in. His best, I really believe that he's tried his best to do things other people's ways. Yeah, uh, and so he in this in this in this series, in a way, he sort of he he comes back to himself. Um, I'm being very vague because <laughs> yeah. because I can't be very specific. But um, he he he's seemingly when you when you first see him, he's seemingly the exact same. But he's got some. He's got some very um, ur urgent, ulterior things going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's literally it. Excellent. And, and finally, um, I was, we were talking earlier, and I know you're very excited about something you're about to do uh, in a couple of hours. But I was wondering, what are you looking forward to next year in terms of film and television? Uh, both of you, is, is there anything you're particularly excited about? That that we're, that we're involved in. Involved or, in, or even viewing, I guess. Um, well, uh, obviously, we're excited for everyone to see. River Street, but actually, um, the way that this season pans out, um, I think that the next season for us as as actors is just going to be a real roller coaster. Um, we start well at the end of January, is it? Yeah, yeah. And um, and I'm kind of, I'm I'm very very excited to see how it's all gonna um, gonna pan out. But it's uh, it, if this season. Particularly the, the the sort of the big finale to this season, anything to go by, I think we're going to have a, a a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be quite a a roller coaster next year. I'm not quite sure. Anyone's quite sure how it's all going to play, yeah. but it's um it's going to be pretty pretty intense. I, I think he, I think I have the same exact answer. That's this. Excellent work. Well, yeah. It's a perfect answer. Look forward yeah. to it. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!